One of the best parts of playing score sheet is that the weekly lineup decisions involve more than just deciding who to start. Real baseball decisions such as making out a batting order or deciding who bunts, steals, or pinch hits are also part of being a score sheet manager. There are also pitching decisions to be made each week, but today I would like to focus on just the batting side of the lineup. One of the main things that I think many score sheet team owners overlook is the importance of platooning and especially the large negative platoon spits most left-handed batters have against left-handed pitchers. For that reason, we do let owners set different lineups versus right-handed pitchers and versus left-handed pitchers. The way platooning works in score sheet is that we take a hitter's real overall stats against all pitchers that week, and then we modify those numbers based on the type of pitcher the hitter is facing that particular at bat in score sheet. The amount of this modification is based on that hitter's real life splits in the past two major league seasons, with average major league splits added in so that players who have not played much the past two seasons will simply have those league average numbers. The exact splits used for players this seasons are listed on our web page. To get to that page, click on the score sheet links in the top navigation bar, and then click on the link Fantasy Baseball Rules, and then Underneath score sheet player lists on stats, click on the platoon adjustments used. As you look over that list, I think you will notice that many left handed batters have rather dramatic adjustments against left handed pitchers. For instance, Ryan Howard has a negative 93 point slugging adjustment versus left handed pitchers, meaning that if in the majors one week he slugs 450 overall, that week in score sheet, he will be treated as if he had slugged at just a 357 clip. So, while you may not want to bench Howard against lefties, you probably do want to at least bat him much farther down in the lineup than you do against right handed pitchers. And certainly, if you have two roughly equal players in position, and one is a lefty and one a righty, you definitely want to platoon them. Another strategy column involves when to lay down a sacrifice bunt. Many sabermetric studies have shown that having players intentionally give up an out by sacrificing does greatly lessen the chance of having a big inning. For that reason, many score sheet owners simply give all of their hitters a dash in the sack bunt column, meaning they will never lay down a bunt. But those same studies show that a sack bunt does increase the odds of scoring just a single run in an inning. And since late in the game that one run can be crucial, I generally have most of my hitters slated to bunt in the seventh inning and even my best hitters are bunting by the ninth inning. In short, my rule of thumb is that virtually every hitter on my team has a bunt number somewhere between six and nine. The steal column is used not only to determine whether your player can attempt to steal or not, but in addition, the program does try to only move players into the top two spots on the lineup if they have a Y in their steal column. You should probably keep that in mind when setting the steal strategy for your bench players. Also, please remember that if you put a dash in a player's rank or pinch hit number, such as shown for Navarro here, that means that late in the game, if you are behind, he will come out of the game for a pinch hitter if you're facing a right-handed pitcher. Likewise, if a player has a number in his pinch hit four column against that type of pitcher, such as Granderson does, he will stay in the game, or if he's on the bench that game, he will do the pinch hitting. Finally, do not forget the weekly lineup deadlines. To have a new lineup take effect for that upcoming week's games, it needs to be sent in before the first major league game starts on Monday. Good luck and enjoy your managerial duties.